Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a soap dispenser. Not too long ago, we went out to California and our friend Alec did 3D scans of both of our heads. So recently, Josh thought it would be really funny to turn the scan of my head into a soap dispenser. So first, he's gonna modify that model and then we'll figure out how to build it. So we got in the soap dispenser that Josh ordered for this project and basically there's an infrared light here and a receiver up here so when you put your hand in between those two pieces it turns a motor and squirts out some soap. So basically we just have to rip this thing apart and pull out all the components that we need. So these are the pieces that Bob got from the soap dispenser. We're gonna arrange it in pretty much the same configuration and we're going to fit it inside the head. Now this was a test print that didn't work really well, but it still gives us a rough idea as to where everything needs to sit. We got the broken down pump from Bob and now we have to figure out how to put all those pieces inside of the 3D printed head. I'd prefer to use Fusion 360 for this because that's what I'm most comfortable with, but it can't handle a model of this complexity. So to be able to work in Fusion, we have to cut the model down. To do that, we're gonna use a program called Mesh Mixer. And in Mesh Mixer, we can take the high quality model and we can chop it up in different planes and reduce the facet count so that I can use it in Fusion and do all the modeling from there. Now that we've broken down the model in Mesh Mixer, I've imported it into Fusion 360, but in order to manipulate it, you have to turn off the timeline and you have to transfer it to a solid shape. Now that we have a solid shape, you can see that it's made up of a bunch of triangles. This is one of the drawbacks of having to use Fusion because it can't handle that complex model. If we were to do this entire process in Mesh Mixer, you could have a smoother shape, but it's more difficult to edit. We're almost done editing the model. I've flattened the back of the head so it can sit against the wall. I've also added some keyhole hangers, and we've taken away the places on the inside that will house all the pump components and the hoses. The last thing we need to do to the model is to finish off the top. And because this is a reservoir, we're going to have to have a place to be able to fill the soap up when it runs out. So I cut a hole in the top of his head, and then I'm going to print a hair plug to cover that spot. Last thing to do is to send Bob's head to the 3D printer. Because it's already in half, it makes it easier to print. So we're gonna do two prints on a tall printer. I got the first half of the head off the printer and it looks great. I wanna make sure that all the components can fit inside and that our geometry is correct before we start the second half because this took about 30 hours to print. Uh, the keyhole hanger on the back works really, really well. The components fit inside. The hose that goes to his nostrils works perfectly. We've got the other half of the head printed out on the 3D printer and we started to fit everything in place and figured out all the places we need to extend the wire. So we're gonna desolder a few components, extend the wire so we can get all the pieces in the right place. We did a little test and it actually wasn't working and I think that the polarity got switched on this uh, receiver. So we're just swapping the wires and we're gonna make sure that it works. So it's all dry fit together, everything is in place, but currently we can't turn it on. All those buttons are hidden down in these holes that Josh put in. And so we're gonna make some button extensions and we did this same thing on the Optimus Prime gun that we did a long time ago. We're gonna take a few pieces of filament from a 3D printer and glue them down into those holes on the ends of those buttons so that you can push them from out here. And 
here I'm using some hot glue to fix the two halves of the head together. I don't want this to be a permanent fix in case something goes wrong with the pump or the motor, we can easily take it apart to fix those pieces. So we've got everything put in place and it's all tested. It seems to be working. So now we're gonna paint it. And before we paint it, Josh is taking out the batteries and also gonna cover up all of the LED stuff that's exposed with some masking tape to make sure we don't paint over those things. At this point, I got in a rush and used hot glue as a seam filler. It did not work out really well. And if you wanna know how to do this correctly, check out the bits video that we made on finishing 3D prints. Obviously this is really silly, but it works. But the point of this project is to be able to take a 3D model and cut it up and manipulate it to do really whatever you want. And you can do a lot of stuff with this technique. You can take multiple models and jam them together. You can take a model, cut it in half and put stuff inside of it like Josh did on this one. Either way, it's a really good technique to have in your back pocket if you do 3D modeling. This is a really silly one, but I hope you liked it. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. We've got a whole bunch of other types of projects that you may be interested in. Check some of those out. And if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that as well. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Not too long ago, we went out to California. Which California? How's it going to stop? I don't know. There's no just control in my just, fans. Just, I'll just talk louder. Let's hope, Dispenser. Uh oh. <laughs>